Welcome to the Origami Fish Tutorial. Now, if you've been around a little bit, you may know there already is a tutorial for this. Um, however, it is a really old video and it uses an old sequence uh, that makes the fish a little bit harder to fold. So today, it's a little bit of an homage to that tutorial and we're making a new one. But yeah, let's jump into it. So for this tutorial, all you need is origami paper or kami. And I prefer to use 15 centimeter, um, and that'll get a fish about this size. However, you can use bigger. Um, I do want to say you don't want to use a paper too thin or too big. Um, otherwise, the fish gets a little bit wobbly. Um, but yeah, 15 centimeter kami, perfect for this model. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is do the diagonal halves here. And we're going to make mountain folds uh, for these. So divide in a half diagonally, just like this. And this model does have color change, as you might have seen. So uh, pick a paper that you think would look good for this fish um, with a color that you would like. And in order for the color to really show, I recommend starting off with the color side, having the mountain folds. And if this is the case, you'll get a fish with the color on top. All right, now that we have our diagonals creased, we're going to do um, the laterals, lateral halves. So these are gonna be valleys with the color side facing up, just like this. And we do both sides. Just like that. And then you're gonna unfold everything back to here. And I know it's a little bit out of frame, but I'm gonna have it diagonally. And we are only going to do this twice, once on top, once on bottom. But we're gonna fold a corner to the middle. And this will be a valley fold. And as you can see, now the white side is starting to reveal itself. And this is where our color change, part of our color change will come from just like this. And remember, only two. It's gonna be a top and a bottom. The next step is we're gonna to want to form something called a half blinced water bomb. So this is half blinced. And a water bomb base, um, if you're familiar with your preliminary bases, is very standard. However, the way I like to do it is I like to reinforce this mountain fold along this side. And then I'm going to pinch mountain fold here and I'm gonna bring my hands together and it's gonna to form this half blinced water bomb base, just like this. Pretty standard. Um, the next fold is we're going to squash fold this flap. So open the flap up 90 degrees. Um, use your finger to flatten it and line that up to middle and squash fold. And I actually don't like to pre-crease this. Uh, I find it to be less accurate than just squash folding and lining up the crease to the middle line. Um, just like that. Now the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna petal fold this. Um, and I believe this turns it into a frog base, but uh, it's a very simple petal fold. Again, I don't really like to pre-crease this. I just line the edges to the middle like this and do the same thing on the other side. And then I align the points to each other and make sure it lies flat along the crease like that. And again, I find this way to be a little bit uh, faster as well as more accurate than pre-creasing it at times. However, if you need to pre-crease it, feel free to uh, pre-crease it as you want. And as you notice, I just folded the uh, tip down and back up. You don't really need to do that, uh, but you can. And we're going to do the same step on the other side. So go for that. All right, so now we have that done on both sides. Now this next step is a little bit tricky um, and it's only going to happen on one side. And this is to create the top fin. So we're going to unfold some of the steps we did without unfolding the entire thing. So I'm gonna first unfold the petal fold like this. 
And then I'm going to unfold the squash fold like this. And then you'll notice we have an extra layer here that we formed uh, before the water bomb base. And we're going to carefully unwrap it. And you want to make sure you unwrap it without unfolding the rest. That way you maintain your water bomb base. So just like this. Just like that. And now this next step is we're going to reassemble our creases. As you can see, we have a lot of creases here. And to do that, we're going to start off by squashing this top portion right here. So you use your finger inside and you're just going to start squashing down like this. You'll notice it naturally kind of comes to a point like that. From here, I like to squeeze the tip and that allows the rest to be flat like this. And these are all existing creases, uh, which is why it collapsed so nicely. And then from here, we're going to squash fold this point down into a preliminary base. And if you folded a crane before, this will look very much like a crane as we're going to pedal fold once again. And it will make a flap that is used um, in a bird base. There you go. Take your time on this. Make sure your creases are aligned. You're going to have to reverse some of these creases um, to fold it like this. Uh, but once you got it, you're good to go. And again, this only happens on one side. Awesome. So we're ready to move to the next step. And the next step is we're going to fold the fin. And so what's going to happen is we're going to fold from this point up to around here. And our reference is we're going to align these edges. So it's going to be a 90 degree fold. So when I fold this, I'm going to start from the point right here. And I'm going to look to see where it lies along that edge, just like that. Once I find that, I'm going to crease it down, just like so. Now, an option for this fin is you can have it slightly above that crease line if you'd like. And that will cause your fin um, to just reach out a little bit over the top. Um, and as you can see, both of these are pretty much in line, but if you like that style, you can do that. Um, but don't overthink this step. Uh, the next step is we're going to do a swivel. So this one's a little bit more tricky and we're gonna do valley fold here. And when we do that, we're gonna simultaneously pull this corner um, and valley along this whole flap like this. And I'll show you what I mean. So as we valley along this, as you can see, it's pulling um, this flap up like this. And ignore this part, I didn't mean that. It's just this bottom flap um, that valleys up. Sorry to confuse you. Uh, just like that, pretty simple. And now this next step is we're going to be preparing for a sink fold. So you're going to want to crease this very well. But what you're going to do is you're going to take this point and fold it to this point. So it's going to make it about halfway right there. And you're going to fold through all the layers. So I'm going to flip it around for you so you can see. It's going to valley fold just like there. Press it down and you want to crease it very well. Just like this, because um, this sink fold, it's not too bad, but you just want your creases uh, very strong and it'll make it easier. So you're gonna unfold this and we're gonna do the sink fold. And how we're gonna go about that is you're gonna wanna open up the model um, from the middle and you don't wanna unfold all of it. You're only um, unfolding this little shape that was caused by our creasing. kind of see it right there and with these creases to do the sink fold I like to turn them all into mountain folds so as you can see some of them are mountain folds but some of them aren't quite mountains um, so I just reinforce the crease just a little bit very lightly and I'm doing this by holding underneath the paper with a finger and then using my nail to kind of crease along the line um, that helps me reinforce these creases just a little bit, just like that. 
And we're almost, we almost got all of them. And one more, just like that. Now, once you do that, it makes the sink fold a lot easier as you can start to just push down the middle and hold the corners. And you can see it's starting to naturally collapse inside. Just like this, oops. And there's our sink fold. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to do a step that I got a little too ahead of myself the first time is we're going to valley fold this flap to the left. So this whole flap will now go to the left like this. And that closes up our top fin. And we're going to turn the model over to work on this side. Um, now, on this side, you can see my sink fold was a little bit uneven. That's okay. Um, if you would like to fix that, all you have to do is really push in the sides to even out. Uh, but overall, it doesn't. it's not a huge detail unless you're very concerned about precision. Um, so don't worry if yours is a little bit off-centered like mine. Um, the next step is we're going to be folding these corners. And now there's... The reference point is kind of like a quarter. Um, so we're gonna be folding around here. And this is gonna be a valley fold. However, it's not super important. Um, it's not an exact measurement. The main thing you wanna focus on is that it's the same on both sides. Um, but you wanna try not to go past a quarter. Um, and so we can check this. Um, either by eyeballing it, or you can kind of fold this flap up um, just to see, you know, how how similar you are on the sides. Um, if you need to adjust it a little bit, you can do that. Just like that. That should be about good. So not fully exact. So I'm going to fix this side just a tad more. And that looks about good. Now this next step is we're going to get this bottom fin out and it's very similar to what we did with the top fin. However, we're going to do it all at the same time. And so it's going to kind of be folding along here and here as well as straight down the middle all at the same time. And I'll show you how to do that. So you want to imagine um, this line and then you're going to use this line as a reference. You're going to take the point. I'm going to valley fold and swivel up until this middle line. So you're, you're rotating it 90 degrees like this. And to do that, you have to be closing this at the same time. And together, it's going to form just a little flap like that. It's a cute little bottom fin. There you go. I'll show it one more time. It's going to start down here. You're gonna pull it to the left as you're closing the other flap and it's gonna swivel in place. And there you have your bottom fin. Right, so this next part is pretty unique to this model and it gives it the color change of the fins. Um, and I find it to be pretty fun. But we're gonna take a corner and you're gonna to fold to the middle line right here. This is the, the middle. Um, however, you're only gonna to wanna to crease just a little pinch. We're not folding all the way. This is just a reference point for us. So just a pinch right there. So I'll draw it in for you. Just a pinch. You're gonna do that on the other side as well. Fold it to the middle. Just a pinch. I'll draw that in as well, right there. Now we're gonna take the corners and you're gonna fold the corner to the opposite pinch. And this time, we're going to increase all the way. So line it up just like that. Increase all the way through like this. Unfold it. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So the corner up to the pinch. Just like that. And then increase all the way through. 
and unfold. Now, we're gonna start on the right side here, as you can see. And along this crease we just made, we're gonna do a reverse fold. Now this reverse fold is a little different. As you notice, when you start to go for it, it's going to push through the middle right here. As you can see, there's a little bit of a gap and that allows us to reverse fold through. And you can see that the color or the white side is now exposed. And so to do the other side, we're gonna to have to flip it around and you're gonna do your reverse fold. However, it's going to poke through the opposite side, just like this. And there we go. Um, now this next step is, so here we, here, here we are. Uh, you can turn the model over to make this a little bit easier. But you're gonna take this flap without the top fin and you're just going to fold up so that it meets and what happens here is you'll notice is the colored side is now all on top with the top fin and then the non-colored side is on the bottom with the bottom fin and you're going to want to orientate your model like this for the next step so now what we're going to do is we're going to be working on these corners and all it is is a simple valley fold um, now the reference point is actually lining up with this edge. So you're gonna valley fold up till that edge behind. And sometimes that might mean this edge comes to the middle, depending on how you folded it. Sometimes it doesn't. But I like to prioritize hiding the layers in the back than lining it up to the middle. Um, so just like that. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Um, to me, it's a little bit cleaner. And as the paper, you know, depending on the thickness, we'll have just a little bit of um, thickness and accuracies. It won't always go to the middle, so don't worry about that. And as you can see, our fin is poking through because we angled it just slightly above. And that is exactly what we want. All right, so we are almost done here. Um, we're just going to work in some details. Um, so we're going to work on the fins. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this corner and we're gonna have a reference point of this top corner and then this bottom edge. So we're going to fold, and there's two flaps here. We're gonna fold them both at the same time. We're gonna start making sure it's on that point. So see that it makes it sharp, just like that. And we're gonna make this valley fold where our corner touches this raw edge here, or this white edge here. And that is where we're going to fold to, just like that. And then we're going to crease and unfold. And on the outer layer, we're going to lift it up and reverse fold. However, when we reverse fold, we want to reverse fold both layers at the same time, just like that. And they'll fit as a pocket. And that gives us our fish shape. We're going to do the same thing on the other side more quickly. And so remember, we're starting at that point, and then we're going to look to see where the corner touches the edge. We're going to crease. And then we're going to reverse fold both flaps at the same time, just like that. See? Awesome. Now we're just going to work on the back fin shaping. Um, and this is kind of to taste. But the way I like to do it is I like the first mountain fold, lining it up with the back edge. As you can see, that's a motif for this design. And once it's like that, when I valley fold it back up, there's no real reference. However, I kind of just eyeball um, where I think the fin should pop out. So that looks about good to me. We're gonna crease down like that. And then we're going to do the same thing for the bottom tail fin is we're going to mountain fold and we're going to open it up, open a layer up like that. We're going to mountain fold to the edge in the back, a little bit below it. And then we're going to valley it back through. No real reference point except just eyeballing where we think it looks good. I'm going to flip it to this side just to check. And these two look about even, so I'm going to press down to crease it inside. 
And that's how we do our tail fins. And even if you've already creased it, you can kind of slide around the tail to adjust and then recrease um, to fix it. And the last thing we're gonna do is a little detail on the eye. This again has no reference, um, but I like to valley fold the eye up a little bit. Um, so I'll show you an example of this here. You can see it's got a little eye. And since it, the paper's small, I just kind of put my thumb where I think the eye should go. And I use my other thumb to lift it. And that starts the valley fold. And then I press down. And that's how we get our eye. Do the same thing on the other side. And you're going to try to remember about where you did it so that the eyes are the same size, sizes. Just about like that. And that's our fish. Now the last step is a little bit optional, but adds just a little bit more detail, um, is you're gonna spread squash the eye. And that just gives it a little bit of a texture. And growing up folding origami fish, a lot of fish had this kind of eye. Um, so I always really enjoyed it. Um, and so for this, what you wanna do is you just wanna carefully use your fingernail to open up that flap a little bit and get a little bit of a spread squash. And this is a little tricky, which is why I say it's optional, uh, but you just wanna be careful. And you can get a little spread squash like that. Um, so if you prefer this little detail, you can add that in, but by all means, it is optional. Uh, if you're using a bigger paper, it is gonna be a little easier to do. So maybe you'd like to try it out on that. But that is the fish design. Check it out. And so this one is red and white. I really like that color. Here's also the gold and white and then a yellow and white. And if you have multicolored paper, so if the other side is also colored, that also looks good. However, the gold foil is technically the one I have for my um, logo. Um, and see, that's where the fish comes from. But yeah, great job making it through the tutorial. And thanks for folding. Hey friends, I'm excited to officially announce the Origami by Boy Smirch collection. Um, this has been something that I've been working on for a little bit, so I'm really excited to bring it to you guys. We have shirts, we have hats, and we even have stickers, so I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's a way to directly help out the channel, and I love being able to bring you guys free tutorials and free videos, so if you're interested in supporting the channel that way, feel free to check it out. And I'm also doing kind of a small promotion where if you do happen to buy something from the store, feel free to send me an image or an email about what you got and I'll send you a free copy of the fish diagrams. If you want to acquire the diagrams another way, uh, feel free to just message me and I'm selling them for a dollar. Of course, the tutorial is free, so this is just another way to support me. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze now I'm